Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office. I'm Brother Bill, and this is Morning Prayer for Monday, June the 5th. It's the first week after Pentecost, and week three in the Psalm Cycle. And thanks for joining me. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, blessed are they that consider the poor, for you will deliver them in times of trouble. Alleluia. Psalm 41. And please recite it with me. <clears throat> Alleluia, blessed are they that consider the poor, for you will deliver them in times of trouble. You will preserve them and keep them alive, and they shall be blessed on the earth. And you will not deliver them to the will of their enemies. You will strengthen them on their sickbed and tend to them in their illness. Be merciful to me and heal my body, for I have sinned against you. My enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die? When shall his name perish? And even if they come to see me, they speak empty words. Their hearts gather iniquity to themselves, and when they go out, they tell it. All that hate me whisper against me. They plot together to cause my harm. An evil disease, they say, clings fast to him. And now that he lies down, he shall rise no more. Even my own friend in whom I trusted, which ate of my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. But you, my God, be merciful to me and raise me up that I may repay them. By this I know that you favor me, because my enemy does not triumph over me. You uphold me in my integrity and set me before your face forever. Blessed are you, God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Alleluia. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are they that consider the poor, for you will deliver them in times of trouble. Alleluia. Deuteronomy chapter 11, beginning at verse 13. If you will only heed his every commandment that I am commanding you today, loving the Most High your God and serving him with all your heart and with all your soul, then he will give the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the later rain, and you will gather in your grain, your wine and your oil, and he will give you grass in your fields for your livestock, and you will eat your fill. Take care, or you will be seduced into turning away, serving other gods and worshiping them. For then the anger of the Most High will be kindled against you, and he will shut up the heavens, so that there will be no rain, and the land will not yield its produce, and then you will perish quickly off the good land that the Most, Hand is, let Most High is giving you. You shall put these words of mine in your heart and soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and fix them as an emblem on your forehead. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise up. Here ends the lesson. Alleluia, why do you boast of your evil, O mighty tyrant? Alleluia, Psalm 52, and please recite it with me. Alleluia, why do you boast of your evil, O mighty tyrant? The goodness of God endures continually. Your tongue plots evil like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. You love evil more than good, and would rather tell lies than speak the truth. You love all hurtful words, you lying tongue. God shall destroy you forever. God shall take you away and pluck you from your dwelling place and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and fear and shall laugh at you. This is the one that did not take God for refuge, but trusted in the abundance of riches and relied on wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise you forever because of what you have done, and I will wait on your name, for it is good before your saints. Alleluia. 
Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Why do you boast of your evil, O mighty tyrant? Alleluia. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, beginning at verse 11. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade people, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for the one who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We no longer know him in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Look, new things have come into being. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his special appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake God made the one who knew no sin to be sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we entreat you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on that day of salvation I have helped you. Look, now is the acceptable time. Look, now is the day of salvation. Here ends the lesson. Defend us and we shall shout for joy, for we put our trust in you. Merciful God, teach us your ways. Keep us from all sin today. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Feed us and lift us up forever. We sing of your power and mercy in the morning. You are our refuge in times of trouble. We place our hope in you, for with you is mercy and plenteous redemption. Every day we bless you. We praise your name forever and ever. for the intentions of those who've asked our prayers and for all of your intentions. Our beloved, which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We declare your marvelous works and your goodness before all. Save us from evil and grant us your blessings forever. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We trust in the mercy of God forever. 
and glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Alleluia.